So I've decided to take a small risk in this painting. Not like painting is a big risky venture, but it is an adventure. And I like to make it as big an adventure for me as possible. So what I do is I build complicated puzzles and then see if I can work my way out of them. That's my favorite thing. Some of the things I've been producing lately haven't been nearly as complicated, so I, I want to produce something that's, that's um, challenging. One painting I did a while ago, a couple months ago, that I really enjoyed doing was Little Ginkgo. Little Ginkgo, 1927. And she's hanging at um, Eden Fine Art on Madison Avenue. And it's a painting of a young woman um, posed, you know, something like this. Or, or Her hands are twisted, but she's also got her finger under her, under her chin. And she's sweet and charming, and she looks like an interesting girl. Um, in the background, there's uh, textured ginkgo leaves. And uh, she's got this, this, this headpiece on, this headband, and her hair is very red, uh, very similar to my portrait of Kusama. And um, anyway, that was really fun and challenging, because I put a lot of textures in there and images that had to be worked with and played with. But I also did this thing where I laid her face out to begin with in an odd manner. And so I decided today to do something similar here. Uh, but I'm building up the texture using acrylic paint, which will dry quickly. Unfortunately, I don't have heavy acrylic. I have like a medium acrylic from Jerry's art Rama here in Providence. I prefer something thicker because what I want to do is build up these textures. And what these textures are going to do, these lines and this gushy paint, once it dries, it's going to leave, it's going to leave an outline of the figure, the figures, the young woman and her dog. But it's also going to challenge me because if I haven't laid out the painting correctly, I've got to figure out how to redesign the figures and um, redesign the figures and pull in the textures so that they all make sense. They work together, but they don't define one another. So that's what I'm doing today. It's something I, you know, it's something I tell I would tell anyone to do, but it takes confidence. You've got to walk into it like Auntie Maine and just I can do this and believe from your toes from your toes, that you can do this, that you can do this, that you can take any reference material you please, any idea that you please, you can put it on canvas and you can make it come alive. But you have to have confidence to make it work. If you go in unsure on your feet, automatically assuming that you will never be able to produce it, you won't. You've just got to walk in, ah, spear in the air, ready to kill, kill, kill. So this is the image I'm working on. And where's my tack? There it is. And I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do the elements very quickly, the black. I don't know how much texture you can see from there, but it, it is building up. And I, I love that, that building up, that texture. Now the thing is, with acrylic on canvas, when it ages, it's fine. It's, it's fine. But once you apply oil, if you've got too much acrylic, it can all crack. So when I go in with the oil, I've got to go over the acrylic lines fairly lightly so that in time, we don't end up with a big cracked painting. The same thing with the aerosol. There's aerosol throughout the Let me take this down. There's aerosol throughout the whole painting. I'm adding design. They're not going to stay flat like this. You have, you know, orange lines and reddish squigglies. I wanted to put a nice red background in this, but I've got to add texture. I've got to add wallpaper and texture in the background so that it doesn't feel flat. Because it's always, the goal is to make it feel alive. Make the character feel alive. She's probably long gone. The puppy is definitely long gone, but we want them to breathe. 
I want this to breathe. I want this in someone's entryway so then when they walk into their home, their apartment, wherever they live or work, they look forward to seeing her because she's alive on their wall. Now I talked about this earlier in another video that I'm doing this painting of a girl and her dog, but it's not just going to be a portrait of a girl and her dog. There's an underlying intent, an underlying feeling, and an underlying story that I have in my head, a little narrative. This woman to me, I think I can, uh, when I look at her face, I know how she feels. She has this lovely little dog in her arms. And it looks to me, feels to me, that that lovely little dog in her arms is her family, is her lifeline. Just like my little Bugsy is my lifeline, and that lifeline, and now our little kitty brother too, um, our little family of three. We, you know, we love each other, and I depend on Bugsy to get me out of my head, where I live. 24-7 like everyone, but I just tend to in my head. So that's the underlying theme here. It's going to be a little bit of loneliness, a little bit of, or theme not, but the, not theme, the idea is going to be a little bit of loneliness, feelings, I guess. Okay, one more time. The underlying feelings in that. A little bit of loneliness, a little bit of t um, dependent, dependentness, dependentness. Dependence? Dependence. Love, affection, belonging, family. I'm going to try and express those and more in my little portrait here of the woman and her dog. And where are we? Like I said, this does take confidence. It really doesn't take a lot of experience, but what you have to be able to do is feel the reference material and when you're putting it down. You have to know how the shoulder works, how it goes. And you have to be confident. Go confident in all directions. I especially love doing the big goopy lines up in the hair. The hair of my figures. I love the way it feels when I'm all done. Uh, there's a painting called uh, Stay Out of the Pool that I did. That's also hanging in New York at Eden Fun Art on Madison Avenue. Stay Out of the Pool. It's an older woman with glasses, and she's seated with her hands on her lap, staring straight at the camera for these big glasses. Well, in there, there's texture, and there's a lot of acrylic. Acrylic blah, 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 whatever I'm trying to say. Yeah, now see, I can already, I can already feel that I'm putting in her arms, and I put, them, I put in that arm a little off. I can already feel it. I'm not trying to grab her out, grab, excuse me, grab her out and get a perfect image of her. Picture perfect image. That's not what I do. But I want her to feel correct. Her arms to feel correct. And it's real. To me, it's kind of easy to do. We know how an arm works. We know how long it is. We know where how an elbow feels. How a shirt feels on that arm and that elbow. And that's what we focus on. I sound like Nurse Ratchet. And that is what we focus on. Did we take our medicine? Um, yeah, so, yeah, I've got, a, I've got the basic idea. And any mistakes that I've made aren't really going to be mistakes. They're going to be fun to work into the project and fun to figure out how to, how to shift everything around. And, you know, just, just over a little bit this way and up a little bit here or down a little bit there. This is going to add so much fun to my painting for me. And then, of course, working in the design that I have going into her head. I love working, working designs into seemingly inappropriate places like her head. I'm really excited. I, I'm 
just so thrilled with this. I've been dying to do this one, one painting. Her hair actually goes, her head goes way up here. Sort of. And if it doesn't, I can fix it. It's okay. It's all fixable. It is all fixable. Even when it looks like it's not, it is. So I don't, I don't ever panic. You don't ever give up. Not on your painting. Yeah, this is this is definitely fun. I'm gonna work design into these ears for her little little Chihuahua dog. I think he is. I don't know. I don't want to do too much in the faces of anyone. Always, always, always. It's the outline. It's the basic shapes. The basic idea. Then you lay out the inside later. You worry about the outside. Worry about the outside. What I'm going to do is when I finish the figure, I'm going to start working in oranges and reds into the background. But I certainly am not going to lay out her eyes. I'd have to lower the canvas so it's eye level with me, so I'm more comfortable with it. That's the thing. Find your comfort zone. Work outside of your comfort zone. Challenge yourself. But find where you are most physically comfortable working. And then I say, make yourself uncomfortable by turning the canvas so you see it from a new direction. Who knows? Who knows? It changes from moment to moment. Anyway, I've got the basic layout. I've got the puppy. I've got her face. I've got her hair. I've got her body. I am going to work texture into her, into her shirt, into her blouse, and then we'll get to town. All right. Ciao.